Today on News Bites, Trump gagged in federal election case, Biden funds Hamas-linked groups, and endless wars, North Korea next? Stick around for these bites and more, all on today's News Bites. Okay, real fast, the federal judge overseeing Trump's 2020 federal election case gags Trump. Prosecutors raised concerns his comments jeopardized public confidence and intimidated witnesses. The order bars a smear campaign, but allows criticizing DOJ in claims of political motivation. Trump's team argues the order unconstitutionally restricts his speech. Trump shot back on social media saying, a terrible thing happened to democracy today, and that he'll appeal the gag order. All right, here's the story. The Biden admin gave millions to Hamas-linked groups despite being warned by a State Department assessment of high risk that Hamas could derive indirect, unintentional benefit from Gaza aid. Officials even felt the need to file a sanctions exemption request with the Treasury Department as to not violate and circumvent anti-terrorism laws. This includes groups tied to a Hamas-linked bank, Arab Bank of Beirut, and Interpal. Interpal, a UK charity, was sanctioned by the US Treasury in 2003 for ties to Hamas. Trump, when in office, banned this type of Gaza aid. Okay, check this out. While Mitch McConnell calls for the US to help Israel defend itself for as long as it takes, Yellen of the Treasury says the American economy is easily able to fund multiple wars and is doing well. Watch. The US is in its weakest fiscal position since World War II with debt to GDP at 122%. Can, can America, can the West afford another war at this time? I, I think the answer is absolutely. Um, America can certainly afford to stand with Israel and to support Israel's military needs. And we also can and must support Ukraine in its struggle against Russia. And look, the American economy is doing extremely well. Okay, here's the latest. A B-52H bomber will make a rare landing in South Korea this week. It showcases the U.S. ironclad commitment to the alliance amid tensions with North Korea. The bomber will also conduct flyovers at an air show in Seoul from October 18th to the 23rd. A B-52 hasn't landed in South Korea in at least three decades. U.S. bombers have flown over South Korea this year, though, after North Korean missile tests. North Korea has fired 21 ballistic missiles in 14 separate test events this year. This comes as Sergei Lavrov of Russia will visit North Korea on Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday. North Korean weapons shipments near Ukraine's front lines have sharply accelerated. All right, in case you missed it, Biden is sure he will run again for president to achieve world peace by putting Putin down through war. He aims to unite Europe and the Middle East. War is peace. Take a listen. Are you sure that you want to run again? Yes, because I'm sure. Look, when I ran, I said the world's an inflection point. The world's changing, but we have an opportunity to make it. So imagine if we were able to succeed in getting the Middle East put in place where we have normalization of relations. I think we can do that. Imagine what happens if we, in fact, unite all of Europe and Putin is finally put down where he cannot cause the kind of trouble he's been causing. We have enormous opportunities. Okay, Poland held parliamentary elections on Sunday seen as pivotal for the country's future and relationship with the EU. The ruling conservative nationalist law and justice PIS party lost its majority based on exit polls and partial results. PIS looks to have lost its majority, but will remain the largest single party. Official results are expected to come tomorrow. The liberal pro-EU opposition is on track to form the next government, led by former EU Council President Donald Tusk. PIS campaigned on protecting borders and Polish values, while opponents promised change in order to improve EU relations and unfreeze blocked EU funds for non-compliance. Those are today's bites, which are on our website at Disclose.tv. Subscribe and leave those comments below.